Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. We've got another CMake video today, this time focusing on Find Package on Windows specifically. I think we need this video because there seems to be a lack of proper information out there on YouTube or in articles, really showing how to download third-party libraries and either build them or just link to them directly with CMake. It's not a difficult topic, but uh, I do notice that a lot of people seem to be downloading the source code and just dumping it into their own projects, either fetching it from GitHub or wherever, or just straight copying it into their projects or using submodules, um, and just building it as part of their project, which I feel like is done more because of its simplicity rather than that being the correct approach. So I'm gonna quickly show you what I see a lot of people doing, and then I'm gonna show you what I think is the more appropriate way to do it using Find Package. Uh, with two examples. We're gonna use SDL for one of them and FreeType for another one where we're gonna actually build the library and then link to it. So let's not waste any more time and dive right into it. I often see third-party libraries being added into a project structure inside of a libraries folder containing all of the project's dependencies. Then the library folders are made part of the project's build script by using the add subdirectory command, building the targets associated with those dependencies and allowing the project to link against them. Add subdirectory can be very useful if you want to split your build configuration into various smaller CMake list scripts that are responsible for building different parts of your application. This is an excellent way of reducing complexity in your root level CMake list file, splitting it up into various more manageable pieces. Using add subdirectory for third party libraries though means that your build script will compile them as well, which grows the number of files in your project. This means that indexing tools that rely on CMake build information will take much longer in a lot of cases, and it will make your project structure a lot more heavy in your development environment. You will very likely see compiler warnings and messages from the compilation of those libraries, though that can be mitigated in some cases. I'd like to show you the correct way to use libraries with CMake by pre-compiling them and then using them directly. You can keep a directory with all of your third-party libraries compiled both for debug and release builds, and then your projects can link directly to them depending on which configuration you're building. In this first example, we're gonna look at linking against SDL2. Uh, I've downloaded the Visual C version of the library. It's a pre-compiled library, meaning it's not source code, but it's rather a lib file and the public headers for SDL2. I'm going to show you how we can help CMake find it, and we're going to link against it uh, as part of our build process, and we're going to actually use it in our application. The first thing we want to do is head over to the SDL website and click on the releases section. Here we see a number of different builds available for download, but we're gonna grab the Visual C version. This one's been compiled by the Visual C compiler and is ready to be used by us. After extracting the zip file, we have the 32-bit and 64-bit versions of the library pre-compiled as lib files. We also have the public include headers and the CMake configuration scripts. If we now switch to Visual Studio, we'll see that we have a very simple little application defining a project, defining an executable, and using the find package command to try and find SDL2 on our system. Of course, that's not possible yet because we've yet to tell CMake where to actually find SDL2 on our system. The way we're gonna do that is we're gonna pass a variable to CMake during its configuration phase, telling it the path that it needs to search in order to find our library. The way to do this in Visual Studio is to right click your CMake list file and click on CMake settings. This gives us the CMake settings for our current build configuration and lets us pass arguments to CMake variables for the various builds of our application. The dash D directive lets us pass arguments to CMake variables. The variable in our case is the CMake prefix path variable, which is a semicolon separated list of directories specifying installation prefixes to be searched by the find package and other find commands. If you're adding multiple search locations for your project's libraries, you would add the directories to those libraries separated by a semicolon. On macOS and Linux, you would use a colon. When given a path to a location, CMake searches for its package configuration scripts, which are used to locate the libraries and header files needed for building applications. Now, if we head back to Visual Studio and we set the value of our CMake prefix path variable to the path where our SDL2 library is located, hit save, 
and CMake will rerun reconfiguring our build. This will let us find the package, compile against the library, and successfully link with it. In this next example, we're going to use the free type library, which is distributed differently than the SDL library. It's actually distributed as source code, so we're going to build it. I'm going to show you how to install it, and then we're going to actually um, take that pre-compiled installed version of the library, and we're going to tell CMake how to find it, again, a lot like the SDL example, and we're going to link against it. The first thing I'm going to do is head over to the FreeType2 website, click the download link, and download the most recent stable version of the FreeType2 source code. The next thing I'm going to do is extract the source code into my packages directory. I have to do this a couple of times because this is a compressed tarball. First we have to decompress it, then we have to unpackage the tarball. After extracting the contents of the tarball, you should see something like this. This is quite different than what we had with the STL2 library, which was already compiled for us. In this case, we have a source code directory complete with a CMake list file, sources, headers, and all the other stuff. If we take this path and we go back to our Visual Studio project and paste this directory to the end of our CMake prefix path argument, and then add to our CMake list file, the find package command to look for the free type 2 library and hit save, you'll see that CMake is unable to find the package that we've requested. This is because this is a source directory, like I mentioned earlier. CMake requires the pre compiled version of the library along with the CMake configuration scripts in order for it to find it. We're going to start by building the free type 2 library by using the Visual Studio command prompt. Start by opening Windows Terminal and opening the developer command prompt for Visual Studio 2022. From here, I'm going into the packages directory on my C drive and then telling CMake to generate a build directory for the FreeType2 library. You do this by doing CMake-S and then the source directory where the CMake list file is located and then dash B followed by the name of the build directory. After hitting enter, CMake scans the current system setup and finds a suitable compiler and toolchain for building the project. This of course is Visual Studio since we're using the Visual Studio command line tools. You'll notice at the bottom of the configuration output that there's a number of libraries that couldn't be found. These are optional for the FreeType2 build, but if we did want to satisfy them, we would specify hyphen D CMake prefix path equals and the paths to those libraries in the previous command. This is exactly like what we're doing in Visual Studio, but simply running it from the command line instead. You would of course need those pre-compiled versions of those libraries somewhere on your hard disk, but you can use the method that I'm teaching here to compile, install, and find those as well. Now we're going to CD into our build directory so that we can actually build the library. You can do that by issuing cmake dash dash build dot for the current directory dash dash config debug. This will allow us to build the library for a debug configuration, and unlike other tool chains, we can actually switch between debug or release builds at the moment of building rather than configuring the build. This is because we're using the Visual Studio toolchain, which allows us to do that. Other tool chains require you to pass the CMake build type variable and setting it to either debug or release when you're actually configuring the build rather than when you're building the actual source code. If we take a look at the build directory, we'll notice that CMake has generated quite a bit of files. These were used by Visual Studio to build the library. If we take a look inside the debug directory though, we'll find the lib file, which is the compiled version of the FreeType library ready to be used for linking. If I copy the build path, go back into Visual Studio, go to the CMake settings, and give CMake the build path, hit save, you'll notice that CMake still can't find the package at that directory. This is because this is a build directory with a compiled version of the library, but it's not a CMake package directory with information on where the lib and header files are. For that, we need the configuration scripts that are generated by CMake when installing a package. Here's how you do that. Back inside the build directory, we issue CMake dash dash install dot dash dash config and pass debug as an argument. This allows us to install the debug build we just generated. If we had produced a release build, we would switch this to release. But if you make the mistake of not specifying the configuration at this phase, CMake will try to install the release build, 
which we haven't actually built yet. Then you have to specify dash dash prefix and give CMake a path where it should install the build. Once that's complete and the package is installed, we can look inside the package directory we just specified where we'll find the CMake config scripts, which tell CMake that the lib files and header files are to be found in that directory as well. Now we can finally take our installed package directory, copy the path and head back into Visual Studio. There, we'll replace the path that we had previously put and hit save. Finally, CMake will be able to find the package, which will allow us to build with it. I can now go back to the CMake list file and add free type to the target link libraries for my target. This will tell CMake to set up the include files for the build, and it'll also set up the library so that the linker knows what to link. I've pulled up the free type tutorial here, just for reference and I'm going to plug in some initialization code just to show that everything is compiling and linking correctly. And there we have it, successful build and link. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope the video was helpful. Please let me know if this is something that wasn't clear to you before. Uh, leave a comment down below if perhaps maybe you were um, copying third-party libraries into your project directly because you didn't quite know how to build and install them. Uh, if maybe some of the architecture stuff wasn't clear, please let me know. Uh, give me a like and if you want more content like this, please hit subscribe and I hope to see you in the next one.